Step one is going to be creating a polygon 2D. We're going to attach the Godot icon.png that comes supplied with every project into that, and we're going to create a polygon. We can use the tools at the top to actually click on our screen where we want to go, and we're going to draw a square that's 128 wide and 128 deep. We're going to attach a camera 2D that is centered on our sprite so that when we run the when we run things later on, everything is centered. We're going to attach a script to our polygon 2D, and we're going to create a function called explode. This explode function is going to grab the polygon we have and save it as a local variable we're going to call points. We want to save it locally because we're going to edit this value later on. Then I'm going to look up the documentation for Triangulate Delaunay 2D. This is in the geometry class and it allows you to take a series, it allows you to take a pool vector 2 array or that polygon we've got earlier and find all the largest triangles that satisfy those points. So I'm going to go into a bit more detail on that now, but we get some values coming out of it you can see in the log at the bottom. So what it does is it takes our polygon, which is made up of a number of points, in this case 0, 1, 2, and 3, and it creates the largest triangles that fill those points. Now it doesn't return the actual coordinates of those points, just the indexes of those points in the original polygon. So it will create one triangle, this first one, which is the point at index 0, 1, and 3, and the second triangle will be the points at index 1, 2, and 3, and it will create the points at index 0, 2, and 3. So out of that function we've generated the coordinates of three triangles, and we're going to need to uh, access the values from our original polygon if we want to find out where those points are in space. So we have these coordinates that have come back out. We're going to loop over them. Quick side note, just check for errors quickly. It's always handy to have that debugging information there. So we're going to loop over those values we got. We're going to find the length of that and divide it by three because that's the number of triangles we have. We're then going to loop over every uh, point in that triangle, which is just in the range of three because there are three indexes for each, uh, for each triangle. Now we're going to want to create a local variable that is going to be the actual, I'm going to call it shard pool, but that's going to be the list of points in our current triangle. So we're going to get that, uh, we're going to get that list, shard pool, and we're going to append the Delaunay points at the current index. So we're going to get our, our index of the outer loop, that's the triangle we're on, so that's going to be either at 0, 3, 6, etc., and then the interior loop is going to be the actual in the actual point of the triangle we're on. So it's going to be uh, the index is 0, 1, and 2 of the first triangle, 3, 4, and 5 for the second, and so on. So if we append those points at those indexes to shard pool, we will have a polygon that is our triangle. So I'm going to create a new polygon 2D. This is what we're going to give that polygon to and we're going to add that as a child of our current polygon. So if you can imagine we've got a square, we're going to be creating a polygon that is the uh, triangle that is the top left side of the square and a triangle that is the bottom right side of the square. I'm then going to set it to a random color just for showing you, uh, showing you what we're actually creating, because if I set it to look like the parent, then you would just see the Godot icon because it would be two identically textured items above and below. So now you can see that from that we get two polygons, one on the top right left and one on the bottom right. So let's get the texture of the parent and apply those to those children polygons. Let's set the child polygons texture to be our current texture and let's move it to the right a bit depending on which triangle we're on so that you can see we get the top left side and the bottom right side. We're then going to want to make the parent invisible we can do that by setting its alpha channel to zero. There is a visibility variable, but if we toggle that, all the children will be set to the same visibility. So we just want to set the alpha channel of the base polygon. Now we want to actually explode these polygons. We want to fire them in a variety of different directions, and we're going to do that by keeping a map of the position of all the triangles. This map is going to have a key, 
that key is going to be uh, the actual child triangle we're on, and then the value is going to be the location of the center of that triangle. Uh, we're going to calculate that by finding the mean of all of the points in the triangle. So we're going to create a variable called center, we're going to add each point in that triangle to center, and we're going to divide it all by three because that gets the mean. So if we have the center of these two triangles, if we try to apply that as a velocity, that means if our value is up and to the left of our center, when we move it, it will move up and to the left relative to the center. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get a vector 2 that is the center of our shape, 64 by 64 here. We could find it with the, using the mean process we did above as well, but we know our shape is 128 by 128. And we're going to subtract that center point. We now have a map with all the children in it and where they are relative to the center of our shape. So in our process function, we're going to loop over all of the keys in that map we've made, so all of the children, and we're going to apply where they are relative to the center uh, as a motion. So we're going to subtract that position from its current position. Uh, I multiply that by delta and another value just to smooth things a bit, and also using delta makes it frame rate consistent. I'm going to rotate the shape uh, based on its x position. So if it goes right, it will rotate right, and if it goes left, it will rotate left. Uh, and I'm also going to decrease the y value of our velocity over time. That's going to make all of the ver all of the shapes fall, even if they're going up at the start, they're going to start curving down. We then need a reset function. All that's going to do is reset our alpha channel in our parent to one, and it's going to remove all the children that aren't the camera. So it'll get rid of all these polygons. We're going to be creating quite a lot later on, so it's, it's very much worth cleaning up, especially as they're all going to be infinitely accelerating downwards. Uh, however you're handling these shapes, you're going to want to clean them up in some way. So I'm then just going to map a bunch of inputs to either explode the shape, to reset the shape, or to toggle between using random colors or displaying how they actually look, just for debugging purposes. So now, we have our shape and it splits off and explodes. And I can toggle between being colored and not colored. But that's much too simple, we're going to want a lot more points in our explosion. So let's add a variable called shard count, and let's loop over that and append random points to our points variable we set earlier. We're just going to choose a random x coordinate between 0 and 128 and a random y coordinate between 0 and 128. And for x in our range, we're going to add those points, and now we have a shape completely full with random, glorious Delaunay triangles, and they're all going to get thrown off in a variety of directions. And that's it. That's how you use Delaunay triangulation to get sub-triangles of a polygon. You can use this for a whole bunch of things. Here's a game I was working on recently where I created a player character that when they die, they explode into their uh, into their individual parts, and then as they and then they move back towards their spawn point and reform together, which was an effect I was very happy with. That did exactly the same thing, but after it was done, I tweened them back to their original spots. Here's a menu I made where the buttons explode when you click on them. Exactly the same effect. This is uh, the actual project where I originally learned about Delaunay triangulation, and then finally within the same game. I made mango crates that when you hit them twice, they break into their sub into their sub pieces. Uh, these actually had physics on them. They were static. I created static bodies, not static, rigid bodies, so that they would actually roll around. It's not a perfect effect, but it's there. Anyway, I've taken up much too much of your time. Thank you very much for watching.